Hello there, my friend, and welcome to this week's Stocks to Watch for next week. I'm Tim from AlphaWolfTrading.com. And before I get started, I want to talk about uh, being the new co-organizer for uh, Stock Twits meetups here in Las Vegas. If you happen to be a Las Vegas local, I just took over as co-organizer of this event. If you're interested, I'm going to have the first event this thir this is coming up Thursday at Montana Meat Company. I'm going to try and host these events uh, once a month in different locations that are more friendly for the locals to get to. So if you're interested, go to meetup.com and look for Las Vegas Investors and Traders Group stock twitch meetups and uh sign up sign up would love to meet some las vegas locals currently we've got five people that are going to be attending and i know that there are a lot more stock junkies in las vegas than five so uh you know it's all about just getting together sharing ideas and um talking stocks right technicals fundamentals whatever Let's get together. Let's let's make something happen. So check it out. If you're in Las Vegas, sign up and and let's let's get together and have some fun. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I got a lot to go through. We're gonna go through the. Uh, let's start out with. I just finished my scans of all the sectors. We'll go over that in a minute. And let's take a look first at the economic calendar for next week. We've got a lot coming up. We've got a lot of economic data. Um, you know, small business optimism, the JOLTS report, which is the job openings. We've got a lot of Fed speak. We have Janet Yellen uh, testifying in front of uh, Congress. We've got uh, mortgage applications, so a lot of Yellen speak. We've got other Fed members. Got the beige book coming out at two o'clock on Wednesday. So a lot going on uh, next week in terms of economic consumer price index, retail sales, industrial production, business inventories, consumer sentiment, a lot of stuff going on. So uh, a few things that could impact the markets from an economic data standpoint, plus the fact that the Fed is very active next week could be interesting could make for an interesting week now we had a pretty interesting close impressive week uh or impressive close on friday after a better than expected jobs report we'll see if that momentum will carry through into next week we also have uh earnings which will be starting next week let's take a look at that for a real quick second here and not a lot of earnings, but you know, earnings season going to be kicking off. Uh, there are a few earnings that are of interest to me. Uh, the black outlined boxes are, uh, I'm interested in, not so much to take a trade in the stock, but interested more in what it might do for the sector. Uh, CUDA reports on two, Monday after the close. I think that one could be interesting. Uh, these in the green here, these could actually be uh, some trading opportunities. Uh, Vox and um, SLP, which we'll be looking at those charts in a little bit here. Delta also reports. Now, that's got a pretty good looking chart. It's actually had a pretty nice move heading into its earnings, but that sector in general is looking pretty good. Transportation. So, and then, of course, we end out the week with J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Wells Fargo, PNC. Infosys actually has a pretty interesting-looking chart. Um, that one could be interesting, worth keeping an eye on. And then um, another bank. So <clears throat> several banks, which, you know, the financial space is looking pretty interesting right now in consolidation over an area of potential price uh, support sitting kind of right on support. So what was resistance has turned into support. We'll see if it continues to hold and maybe we get a move in the financials. Financials more of a, you know, thicker stocks, more more swing or long-term hold type plays than day trades. All right, so that kind of wraps up 
what I've got on my focus for next week in terms of economic data and earnings. And then let's take a look at some of the individual sectors that caught my attention. So we did get a little bit of a bounce uh, in the NASDAQ. We'll see if we can get some follow through, some semiconductors. Notice going through my scans, several semiconductors bouncing. Uh, you know, still below the 50 day moving average in the NASDAQ. You know, we'll see if we can take that out and head back up into this area where we might see some price resistance somewhere around uh, 62.30 or so, somewhere in that area, maybe uh, up into the 6200, right? Nice, good round number that could act as resistance, kind of looking like a double top formation here. Um, I think NASDAQ, you still need to be a bit cautious. Doesn't mean you can't get some bounces in, in stocks that have been beaten up, like NVIDIA, uh, AMD had a little bit of a bounce, Tesla. Uh, maybe that gets a little bit of a bounce. We'll see how it all plays out next week, but definitely worth keeping an eye on. And then one of the sectors that I want for my long-term hold portfolio was actually testing the 50-day moving average. This is uh, robotics and artificial intelligence. Got a little bit of a bounce right off of the 50 EMA. I would be more compelled to start a position at around 18 or so on a pullback to this trend line, but may not get there. Could get a little short-term trend line break, maybe go up and test highs, but I do, am keeping an eye on that whole space, and it really is more for a long-term hold position. So let's take a look at, um, you know, gold and, and miners. I think you got to be careful there. Uh, they uh, do not look very healthy, right? It did pierce the lower Bollinger Band. Maybe get a snap back there in uh, some of these. Right, if uh, the dollar weakens, uh, maybe maybe uh, we get some kind of a bounce there, but still not one of my favorite sectors out there. I can tell you that. Um, financials, like I said, you know, it's sitting right on top of an, of an area of potential price support, consolidating, probably waiting on those earnings uh, towards the end of the week. Let's take a look at a couple of other. We'll take a look at IY. So now IVB, definitely one of my favorite sectors out there right now. Big pop over the 300 mark. Been in a nice consolidation. Uh, starting to tighten up a little bit. You know, maybe we get a, a break over that trend line and go test those highs in the IBB. But I do like that space quite a bit. And it is in focus for uh, next week. IYH uh, Healthcare. Another really nice looking formation on the daily time frame. IYT, right? <clears throat> nice consolidation here in the IYT. Had a little bit of a pop. Pierce the upper Bollinger Band consolidating. You know, Delta reporting this week could be interesting for the space. You've got the 50 day moving averages sloping higher, you've got the 200 day sloping higher. Transportation sector is looking pretty darn good. Um, let's see what else we've got going on. SMH did bounce a little bit, um, but coming up into the 50 day S, uh, EMA and SMA plus this trend line, we'll see if they can, uh, if it finds resistance there, or maybe we continue to pull back or if we can actually wind up taking that out with some conviction, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe we, we see a little bit of resistance, but we'll see how it plays out. Like I said, uh, S&P 500, you know, testing the 50 day looked as though, I mean, we actually did lose the 50 EMA and SMA close below it, managed to bounce on Friday. We'll see if we get any follow through into that bounce. And then maybe come up and test some resistance here at the trend line right around 244 or so. TVIX and UVXY, uh, if the markets continue to bounce, you're not going to see a whole lot of activity there. But if the markets do roll over, those could be worth watching for some day trading scalp opportunities. USO. Had a nice little run right up into the 50-day, found resistance there. Now what I'm watching here 
is a pullback to a double a double bottom test potentially right somewhere around 875 or so see if that acts as support and we bounce off of there um, I do have some uh, oil names that I've started positions in in my long-term hold portfolio added to one of them on Friday uh, you know like I said long-term hold position I'm buying in, in the same range that um, some insiders have bought significant amounts and I'm willing to be patient and let that play out the dollar had a little bit of a bounce last week pulling back uh, just a tad we'll see if that gets a double bottom bounce as well aerospace and defense very impressive sector testing an area of price resistance We'll see what it does next week, but I like aerospace defense as well. Home builders had a nice little bounce right up into trend line resistance. We'll see if that acts as resistance. It bounced right off the 50 day. Home builders actually still looking pretty, pretty good as well. Uh, material sector did see a couple of material names out there that kind of had an interesting look uh, on the daily time frame, but coming up into potential resistance. We'll see what happens, but consolidating, right? Consolidating above the 50-day moving average. XLE not looking all that great. We already talked about financials. Utilities also not looking great, but you know, did see uh, some nice action in a couple of utilities on Friday after Warren Buffett uh, is looking at buying a one of the utilities out there, and I think. Um, we could see maybe some follow through in that space. Uh, I do have one on the list this week that uh, actually had a really nice day on Friday. See if we get any kind of follow through there. Healthcare, we already talked about that. XLV, nice little consolidation after piercing the upper Bollinger Band. Consumer discretionary, a little bit of a bounce below the 50 day moving average though. And you know, retail, which is not a good looking sector at all. Right, not a good looking sector, but I'll tell you what is looking pretty good. And I uh, really missed this good friend of mine, uh, showed me this a long time ago. And uh, you know, I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I buy. So the retail space, not hot. You know what is hot? online retail I buy my buddy told me about this stock back here I think in the $24 range $25 range and it has been in a very nice uptrend so you know while retail brick-and-mortar has not been doing well this one has been now this is a very very thin volume 20,000 shares traded on Friday but what a move this has had and it's actually got a pretty nice looking setup again uh, looking like maybe it uh, might be setting up for even more uh, new highs. So pretty impressive there on iBuy. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the stocks to watch. This is last week's list. Uh, VSTM, 66% winner, uh, had a one heck of a pop on Thursday and Friday. P Piers uh, went up and had a $6 test, 15%, and then... The worst performer for the week was this TEGCD, little pot stock. Um, and actually, the pot stocks pulled back a little bit last week. Um, but I still like that space. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just read an article about Las Vegas uh, already looking, at, looking like they may run out of, out of inventory um, after one week of recreational sales. Pretty crazy stuff. So I do still like the space, but there are some questions about uh, whether or not they're going to be able to continue to sell because they can't get the stuff delivered. So that's just a little interesting thing that's happening. There's a special vote that's going to occur next Thursday that could address that problem. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's take a look. Over here on the right, I've got uh, a list, you know, and this is what I try to teach over at alphawolftrading.com is how to build your own uh, trade plans. Know your risk reward. And uh, every week, you know, I get uh, a list of stocks from some of the members showing me their trade plan. Peter is very consistent about doing that. 
and uh, I add those to, to the list and we kind of go over those. So uh, let's get rolling here with this week's stocks to watch. So Pixie was actually on the pre-market prep on Friday and uh, had a very nice pop uh, on pretty decent volume, 2.3 million shares and you know broke out over resistance so looking for a potential continuation maybe a red to green move on pixie look for a pullback to say nine dollars and fifty cents right that was where we had some resistance and now we've broken above that see if that acts as support so you get a pullback to 950 maybe that's a good place to take it for a bounce this could be more of a uh, day trade if you're not comfortable holding a recent ipo overnight but pretty impressive action on good volume on Friday. See if that carries over into this week. SPKE, so this also was on the pre-market prep. Uh, it had gotten an upgrade and what I liked about this stock was that it was piercing the lower Bollinger Band and approaching a 200 day moving average for a bounce. Uh, got a nice little uh, pull and then pop on Friday. It is coming up into this potential uh, area of this trend line resistance, right? So actually want to close them below the 50 day moving average, 8.5 million shares. Now they just did a, uh, a split, right? Two for one, uh, 8.5 million shares, 51% short interest. So, you know, this thing could get a little wacky. I mean, and you just got the stochastics which crossed to the upside uh, you know, if it takes out that trend line, I think potentially you go back up and you test these all time highs. It's definitely, I think, worth keeping an eye on uh, SPKE. All right. See if we see how we react here. It might need to consolidate a little bit. Maybe we put in a little tight formation here just below the twenty dollar holla and then you get a next a breakthrough uh, the trend line. But pretty nice looking setup on SPKE. Could be a day trading opportunity or a higher risk swing, um, a lower risk swing on a pullback to an area of potential support. But AFMD, so one of the members uh, in Alpha Wolf has, has got a, uh, actually I think a couple of members have a position here. Uh, we were looking at the $2 area of price support and that's really where it pretty much held up. And it's been grinding higher. It's now it's looking at a potential flat top breakout. Now it's a little extended, pierced the upper Bollinger Band. I think what could be compelling on this one is a pullback to about two dollars and thirty cents. See if it holds there as support for a bounce. Uh, volume is starting to increase here. Thirty-four million shares in the float. Uh, a pullback to two thirty. See if it holds a support. Maybe that's a good entry. Could be for a higher risk swing, so you got to play that size appropriate. It is a biotech, so you know this thing has bad news overnight, and uh, it could open up in the in the, you know, underneath a buck. So you got to be real careful with these types of plays. Just play it size appropriate. But this has got a pretty compelling look. I think maybe on a pullback to 230, or maybe even a pullback to the cluster of moving averages right around 225, could be a good entry. And then you put your stop below two bucks, right? Because two has been acting as support. So pretty good looking setup on AMFD. So NH, this is sent in by Peter. This had a nice pop, right? Nice flat top breakout pop. Got all the way up to the 100 EMA, the $5 holla, and then pulled back. Found some resistance. Now this is a still a pretty healthy looking situation, right? I mean, the breakout happened here, right? So unless we come back down and we take out the low of this candle right here, uh, this is still looking like it's in play. So got up to an area of resistance, pull back, did not hold the 50 EMA as support, but basically holding this area of price resistance as support, 375, let's call it, 370. It seems to be holding this support. Maybe you get a trend line break, but let's see what Peter's uh, trade plan is. Entry 380, stop 355. 
So it looks like just below the 50 SMA. Uh, let's see. Turning up, close above the 50 EMA. Entry would be red to green, touching previous resistance as support. Stop would be below the 50 SMA. Yep. First target would be 100, the 100 moving average. And second target would be top of the recent highs. Earnings are August 8th. So uh, let's see. First target is 445. The second target is 495. And that gives them a risk reward of 2.6 to 1. I like the whole the whole setup. Now look, it's below a 200 day moving average. It's also in a dominant downtrend, right? This is a not a good looking stock in terms of its trend. The dominant trend is is lower, right? So it makes this a riskier stock because of the fact that it's below the 200 day declining 200 day. But that doesn't mean you can't get a nice little little scalp out of this. So uh, maybe on it, you know, I like the whole trade plan. I like the setup. It's worth uh, keeping an eye on. Uh, it only traded 134,000 shares on Friday. That's it's over 100,000, which is good. Would like to see more volume. 21.5 million shares in the float. 11% short interest. Um, I think too, you're probably. Maybe your first target, well, the first target is 445, so that's perfect because that's likely where you're going to have some resistance right there at that long-term trend line. If it can take that out, then yeah, I think you get a five test, but I probably would scale out about three-quarter of my position coming up into that trend line. All right, um, Fred, let's talk about Fred, right? Fred, Pierce the lower Bollinger Band and looking for a snapback trade on this one now my 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 problem with it is it we got out of the lower bollinger band here and typically what you want to see is you want to see a nice hard snapback right back from to get back into the bollinger band and what it's actually doing is it's kind of grinding sideways at least that's what it looks like right now so that could actually be you know, building out a bear flag for another move lower. So I'm looking at this for a snapback play. Maybe we haven't had total capitulation yet where, you know, everybody has thrown in the towel. Um, but I think it's worth keeping an eye on, right? Could be a day trading opportunity. Again, small, small float, 17 million shares in the float, 90 is that, am I reading that right? 90% short interest could get interesting. Um, didn't have the kind of a bounce that I would was hoping to see. We'll see if it consolidates here. If it starts consolidating out, I would probably be a little cautious there until you, until we get a determination of which way this is going to break up or down, right? Could, could have another break lower. So just be careful with Fred. Uh, CNET had some news last week. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's flirting with a, uh, potentially a seven test, right? Just filled this gap right now. Maybe it drifts back down and retest this area of price support right around the 50 EMA, right around $5 and 60 cents. This has only got 23 million shares in the float, but it did trade 1.6 million shares on Friday. Uh, it might need more time to consolidate. Maybe $6 or just below six could be an interesting spot. The 50 SMA, uh, look for that to act as support. Somewhere in that area, pull back, find support, maybe bounce. Uh, day trade, I think uh, more than a swing trade because of the fact that it is a biotech but I think it's worth having on the radar. Uh, CNAT CARB. Now this is, uh, these are, these are the ones that uh, CARB has. Oh no, 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 no. This space is, is somewhat interesting and uh, it had pulled back after a nice run to the 50 day moving average, it actually pierced it, but then broke back above it on on Friday. 
on decent volume. It wasn't a big volume spike, but you got stochastics curling to the upside. And we're right into this area of resistance again, looking for a $22 roll, right? Uh, 25 million shares in the float, 10% short interest, potential red to green type move. Maybe you get a pullback to 21, right? Look for 21 to act as support, the 50 EMA, and then bounce, get some follow through. But uh, take out 22 bucks. I think if you can take out 22, you get a 23 test fairly easily, and that could be a place to scale. Uh, but let me see here. Okay. All right. So that's that's the uh, the play on carb. Pretty pretty good looking setup there for potential continuation. IPXL. Now this this had news last week. It did not react to the news it's at a uh i mean it's in an interesting spot and here's what we just had happen we just had the 50 day cross over the 200 day you got that golden cross right 50 day is sloping higher nice consolidation just below the 17 dollar holla testing this trend line you know looking for it to take out hold on Looking for it to take out 17 with some real conviction, right? Uh, nice little pop and then consolidation. Take out 17. The news look good, and actually their fundamentals don't look too shabby either. So I think this one could be worth watching. It's only got 64 million shares in the float, almost 12% short interest. Take out that trend line. Take out 17 bucks. I think you get a nice little pop. Probably more of a day trade type setup for IPXL. Uh, CSTM, so here's one of those material names that actually has got a little bit of a flat top breakout look potentially on deck here. Take out 750 with some conviction. Now, it is approaching overbought, uh, but decent volume on Friday, uh, 1.6 million shares in the float. And Peter actually had this on his list as well so he's looking at an entry at 705 so a little bit of a red to green move right pull back to seven bucks which was acting as resistance see if that holds the support uh put the stop at 655 which is just beyond just below this area of support that's been holding up for a little bit here uh first target 760 which is an area of Actually, it's closing this gap. Actually, the gap's closed. So basically, we're looking at just an area of potential price resistance. Second target, 790, which is right here, where we've got some resistance and support. So I actually like that quite a bit as well. Uh, red to green entry above the short-term moving averages. Stop would be below the bottom of the recent consolidation. First target is top of the recent pin candle and the second target is the previous resistance back in january earnings are august 1st i like the whole setup I like the whole plan good job peter all right let's move along here inap small float 51 million shares 16 percent short interest in an interesting spot all right got a little cup here all right it's uh having a difficult time here Maybe the place to look at it as a pullback to, to the 50-day moving average right here around 335, 340 or so. Look that look for that to be your entry. Um, you know, put a stop maybe below 320. And looking for it to take out the $4 holler, right? If we can take out the $4 holler, likely going to have some resistance somewhere around 410 or so. So you probably... You know scalp a little bit or scale out a little bit there but if it can take four out with some real real convention conviction and some volume i think potentially you get a five test maybe a little more right but uh worth keeping an eye on inap more of a more of a uh, a day trade type Set up did trade a million shares on Friday, so decent volume. 
as well on that one, INAP. Uh, HTZ, so this is not a hot sector. This is not a hot uh, stock. It's in a dominant downtrend. But it is, uh, cons you know, it did just have a little pop. There's another one in here. I think it was Car. That might be Avis, which actually has a pretty interesting look as well. But this Hertz is uh, flirting with its 50-day moving averages, flirting with the $12 holler, flirting with the trend line. Uh, could get some action. I would be looking at that strictly as a day trade. Uh, entry for Peter here is $11.15. So let's take a look at that. $11.15. Looks like basically right there at the 50 SMA. Stop 1050. First target 1330. That's a pretty aggressive first target, got to tell you. Uh, first target on this one, if you were to get that entry at 11.15, would be my, my thinking it would be somewhere around 12 bucks. That should be your first target. That, that is a really aggressive target. Um, I think you want to probably keep it a little more attainable. Uh, you know, maybe you get a 13 test after that, and then maybe you get a gap fill, right? But I would scale out. Uh, probably half at $12 and then on the uh, maybe uh, another quarter at you know close to 13 you want to hold some see if that gap fills no problem but uh, I think 15 is probably a really aggressive target first close above the 50 EMA in a long time they recently announced a deal with Apple looking to red green entry close to 50 uh, 50 day moving average stop would be below the 20 EMA first target would be the top of recent downtrend second target would be 100 moving average no recent insider buying I think Carl Icahn is pretty pretty big into Hertz or he was at one time I don't know if he still is but um, I like you know look I get it and there could be a, a decent trade opportunity there I would just be number one I would play this very size appropriate and number two, I would be a little more uh, less aggressive with my targets on that one. All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, HTZ, let's see, TENX. Here's, the, here's this week's penny play. You know, look, it's uh, above a rising 50-day moving average, 50 EMA. It is below the 200-day. But, you know, to tag that 200 day, it'd have to get up to about a buck 20 or so. Got a gap to fill on the daily. I think this had some news last week. It's got a pretty interesting setup here. You know, maybe the place to, to look at getting it could be somewhere around the 59, 60 cent area. <clears throat> Pull back to there, hold as support, and maybe look to take it for a little lotto swing. Uh, see if maybe you get a test back up to 80 cents, right? You get it at 60, you make 20 cents, you scale out some, you hold a few, and see if you can get a test up into that 120 area. Uh, Need some volume. It traded 1.5 million shares on Friday, only 25 million shares in the float, 8% short interest. I think it's uh, worth keeping an eye on for a a day trading opportunity WTW this is a painful one to actually uh, put up here because I had it at a much lower price and I sold it way too early but um, it's consolidating it had a nice pop consolidating and actually closed uh, had a pretty fairly impressive close on Friday looking like it's getting ready to break out again after a nice consolidation 21.5 million shares 43% short interest, and that short interest has been there for a while. Shorts are not giving up on this, and, and uh, you know they, they've got to be seeing some some pretty decent uh, amount of pain. So this actually could get a little squeezy, right? I mean, if this thing really breaks and goes, you know, you're going to see some shorts that are already seeing quite a bit of pain uh, experience more pain, right? So potential day trading opportunity in WTW and maybe what you look for is a pullback to 34 uh, as a pr as price support right pull back to 34 3380 somewhere in that area see if it holds the support and then you get a bounce I mean this is this 
has moved two days, right? It's already had a two day move. So maybe you get one third day, uh, we get a third day, a little parabolic day on. Look for a red to green move on WTW. I think it could be, I think it could be worth worth keeping a close eye on. Uh, Vox. So auto parts, not hot, not hot. <laughs> you know, uh, AutoZone. A, a what is that? A A Z or A A. Hold on. So maybe it's A Z N. What if I spell it right? A U T O zone. A Z L. There we go. Yeah, so auto zone, completely out of lower Bollinger band, right? These also could be uh, snapback opportunities. Um, O'Reilly, right? Reported earnings, big gap down. Uh, this is not a hot stack. Advanced auto parts. That was, that's the other one. A A P. So this is not a hot sector at all, right? Uh, we've got several of these stocks that are out of the lower Bollinger Band. Vox is a uh, auto parts, you know, play that is bucking the trend. Uh, S O R L was another one that bucked the trend last week. Had a couple, three, four days of a nice little grind um, off of the 50-day moving average. Pretty nice move there, but. Uh, this box reports on Monday after the close. And it's, you know, it's actually kind of flagging out a little bit here at, I think, pretty big area of potential resistance, right? This is a pretty big area of resistance. If it takes this $9 out with real conviction, could get a nice pop in box. So, uh, worth keeping an eye on it. It's only got 19.8 million shares in the float. And let's take a look at Like I said, reporting after the close on Monday. So it could be uh, could could move a little bit heading into earnings, could be a mover after earnings. We'll have to see how it plays out. SNCR. I think this is. Yep. Peter sent this one. Entry 16. You know, this one has got an interesting chart to me. It actually looks like a buyout, right? And then these guys came out and, and, and announced that they're exploring strategic alternatives, including a potential sale. Like the consolidation above the 50. EMA, uh, what's the cash is turning back up, looking for a red to green entry, 50 EMA, stop below 9 EMA, first target is top of the recent consolidation, second target is top of the recent pin, no recent insider activity, earnings are August 2nd. All right, so entry 16, stop 15.50, risking uh, 50 cents to make almost a buck, almost a buck 50. Looking to make a dollar thirty. Uh, second target nineteen thirty. Risk reward two point six to one. So uh, I'm just so so on this whole this whole chart, this whole setup, right? Declining fifty day moving average, declining two hundred day. To, you know, to, in a down dominant downward trend. Not sure what this gap was. Not sure if that was the rumor before that they were looking at a strategic sale. I mean, it's interesting. I think, again, this is one you, you look to be very size appropriate with and uh, keep a tight stop. But not, I mean, it's it's your it's your plan, Peter. It's your plan. I mean, it does have an, it kind of an interesting look. It is sitting right on top of the 50 EMA, but I don't know. I think there's probably better opportunities out there but worth keeping an eye on that one if you catch it right uh a gen this is a biotech looking for uh probably a day trade in this one 77 million shares in the float 14 percent short interest nice big pop nice consolidation um 
you know, it's probably more interesting on a pullback to like 380 or 390 or so. See if you pull back to there, maybe for a bounce, right? And then take out 412 with some conviction. I think you get a test up into the 200 day moving average, which is going to put you right around $4.30. Like I said, red to green move is kind of what I'm looking for on that day trade. It might just continue to consolidate, but does have a pretty good look to it here. Rising 50-day moving average, I like it. SLP, this is the other one that's reporting on Monday after the close. And this is a super thin, 43,000 shares traded hands on Friday, 11 million shares in the float. So it's super tiny, it's overbought. Um, so it's got a nice looking potential flat top breakout though, looking for a $13 holla. Now you may get a false breakout, right? You get a pop off the earnings, pop over 13. A lot of people are gonna be looking at that level and then you get a pullback. So, you know, I have to really kind of take a look at the earnings, see how they are, but maybe a pullback to $12 to the 50 day where you've got res you know potential support in this area, right? 1195, 1180, let's call it. You got the 50 day, you got price support. Maybe that's the spot to look to try and get it for a swing. I don't know. I mean, this is uh, flirting with all time highs, lower left, upper right. Now it has, it has kind of ramped away from that trend line in the 200 day. And that's why I'm thinking maybe, you know, it gets some kind of a pullback, maybe even down to 1050 could be interesting. And it might be more of a high risk swing because of the size of the float, but it could be pretty interesting in that area uh, and still maintain a nice uptrend, right? So we'll have to see what this one does after after the close on Monday after the report earnings, but pretty, pretty nice looking setup there. Just super tiny. Need some volume to participate. Could be a day trade, could be, could be a... Uh, higher risk swing on a pullback to potential support. Uh, SRNE, uh, looking at that one as, uh, actually, you know what, I like this one too. This had some insider buying, and Peter actually sent this one in. Looking for an entry at a buck 88, stop at a buck 79. First target 212, second target 280. All right, second target's a little aggressive, right? Let's say 250, 255. Um, you know, sometimes those half round numbers, you know, 250, that area can act as pretty good resistance. I think I would scale out at 250 or take some off the table and then maybe look and see if you get a, a test all the way up to the 100 EMA around 275. Um, like the consolidation, stochastics curling back up. Entry would be at the 20, 20 simple moving average. Stop would be below, low of Friday's candle. Recent insider buys, CEO 29,000 shares, a buck 80 to buck 84. Director bought 10,000 at buck 79. Large insider buys in April by funds at two. Earnings are August 14th. So yeah. A lot of good stuff going on there in terms of insider activity, and I am a big proponent of that. Uh, and I, I do like the setup on this. I actually kind of like the plan. I just think uh, you just need to be a little, probably not as uh, aggressive with the targets, right? So let's see, first target, 212. Yeah, I think 212, 215, somewhere in that area, you, you look to scale, 220. Right, and then second target 250, and then maybe hold some lottos, see if you get all the way up there. But good looking setup on SRNE as well. CHGG, um, I was looking for a bounce off the 50 day moving average. Actually, what it did is it bounced off the $12 holla. 12 appears to be holding a support, so uh, this had a nice pop off of earnings, pulled back to an area of price support. We're seeing a little bit of a bounce. See if we can take out that trend line. This has got 71 million shares in the float, 36% short interest. So uh, it can get it can get some nice action. Now this could be a double top, right? This could be a double top, and that is the only concern that I have. But stochastics curling up. Um, 
like I said, good earnings, nice, nice rising 50 day moving average. This, uh, this one, you know, maybe you just get a 13 test back up to this 13 area, find some resistance there, but that's a, a pretty nice little move. I think it's worth, worth paying pretty close attention to CHGG. Look for a trend line break. ADMP has been on my radar for the last several weeks and still going to be on my radar. You know, I think that on a pullback to the 50 EMA or the 50 SMA, this one I would, and it's a, it's a drug company. I would be interested in taking this as a, um, as a swing or long-term hold proposition. This is the generic EpiPen that just got approved. And I, you know, I think on a pullback into this 450, 440 area could be interesting. Yeah, and maybe for a day trade, if it can break out over this trend line with some real volume, right? But uh, it hasn't really been able to do so. It's, you know, it had this big pop. It's just been kind of grinding, consolidating. I think it gets really compelling on a pullback to 450 or so, 50 EMA. I think that's that's where it's it could be worth taking a swing. Uh, GSAT, speaking of insider buys, this had a massive, and I'm talking massive insider buy. Um, 17 million shares, I believe, by the CEO. Now let's take a look at this real quick. James Monroe the third, it looks like, uh, or this first, I don't know. Um, James Monroe purchased 17,837,000 shares at $1.85. <laughs> It was a $33 million purchase. That's, that's you know, stepping up to the plate. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that's pretty much stepping up to the plate. Uh, it could be interesting, right? Uh, there's There has been rumor that these guys could be a, a takeout target a acquisition. I think it's worth keeping an eye on GSAT. So for either a day trade or even a higher risk swing, uh, that you play size appropriate, right? Um, and if you can get it at a buck ninety or a buck eighty-five, that'd be the ideal place to get it, or even lower, right? Maybe you get it a uh, buck seventy-five, right? Um, but it had a nice little reversal candle here. Candle here. We'll see if it gets any follow-through, but that that's a big purchase, and that gets my attention when I see that kind of kind of purchase. Um, sure. Uh, let me put this note on here real quick. Share 17 million shares at 1.85. And, and that was on June 30th. Okay. So GSAT, worth having on the radar. Kara, this was sent in by Peter. Look, it's pulling back to the 200 day. Those trial, the, the, I don't think, it just, this was from a failed failed phase two or three uh, data or, or perceived, I'm not crazy about this. Uh, entry 1356, stop 1299, first target 1460, second target. I'm not a fan of this other than potential bounce off 200 MA. It's one I would be watching for support, 200-day moving average. It's oversold, but it could be, it's oversold, but could be potential bounce at that level. I would give it 50 cents stop just in case 200 doesn't hold. 31% uh, short interest, 27 million shares in the float. I definitely want to watch to see if action before jumping in. Good. Director sold 250,000 shares, 2581, 2658. I really don't like this name. Yeah, I don't like it either. Take it off your list. I mean, it's not out of the lower Bollinger Band. Yeah, we could have some support here at the 200 day, maybe get a bounce. You know, it was it was not a good press release. It's it's below this area of price support right here. I don't like the upside. I I just don't like this at all. So just in my opinion, take it off the list. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I don't like it. I don't like it. All right, S -L -S -L -C -A. Uh he's actually looking on it as a short on this. Let's take a look. Entry, 
Stop 3410. First target 3175. Second target 2750. Should be part of short play looking for a green to red. Almost, it's closed below the 200 EMA on the weekly. I don't see near term bounce spot. If I can get 50% retrace off Friday's action uh, entry, then it would be great. Stop would be 200 EMA on the weekly. First target would be down to the recent support on the daily. Second target would be a larger fib retracement. I like it. It definitely, uh, I mean, you've got a declining 50 day. It looks like you've got the 200 that's starting to curl over. You definitely have a broken uh, uptrend. Yeah, I like the whole setup. All right, this is the last one, and this also was sent in from Peter. Mara, this is a patent company that has been consolidating after a big pop right here at the 200-day moving average. It does have an interesting look. So uh, for a penny play, right, 21 million shares in the float, pretty tiny float. Increasing volume, nice consolidation after a recent pop last month. Uh, it is consolidating just above the 50-day moving average. I'd like to see a red to green at the bottom of the recent consolidation. Stop would be below the 20-day moving average. First target would be the top of recent consolidation. Second target would be 100, 100, day, 100 SMA. Uh, earnings are the 21st. No recent insider buying activity. Purely a day trade on this one. And, you know, it's going to have some resistance at that 100-day. It's going to have some resistance at the, the trend line. Um, I'm, I'm, it's in a dominant downward trend. I would be, I would be very, very careful with this one. Um, there could be a, a, a day trade opportunity. But my, my problem with it is, I mean, 75 cents, if it went up there, that's a pretty good return, right? I mean, that's a pretty darn good return. I guess I would... You know, like to get it as close to that support level as possible, like 30 cents. You know, you put your stop at 22 cents, right? And then you're looking for it to take out, to go back up and test 50 cents, scale some at 50 cents, and then see if you can get uh, a pop up to uh, that 70, 75 cents. But I'd be scaling out some at 52. That's why I want to get it as close to 30 cents as possible. Okay, that is it. Um, oh, you know, wait a minute. Hold on, I'm missing one, and I got to put this on here. I got, I, I'm missing one, and I'm gonna put it on right now. OCLR. I don't know how I didn't get that on here, but let's do this. OCLR. So. This space started to pick up a little bit. Now, this is semiconductors, op communication equipment. Um, this bounced on Friday. I actually, so I sent out a, a trade plan on Friday uh, to all the pro members over at Alpha Wolf Trading with a, uh, a strategy to get into this stock, my targets. And I'm looking for, at this maybe to get some follow through next week. Maybe get a red to green move take out that trend line and get a test up to 11 bucks. Uh, had a recent upgrade with a $14 price target, some speculation out there that there's already a $12 uh, acquisition price that's been offered for the company. Um, pretty interesting looking setup. I, I think potentially a day trade opportunity or a swing. Um, a swing on a pullback to an area of price support. So keep an eye on OCLR. All right, that now is complete. I am complete. No more stocks for next week. I can tell you this, though. I have a, an alert list of stocks, and I have still, I go through that alert list every week and, and filter out the ones that have broken down or, that the uh, setups are no longer valid. And I still have a lot of stocks that are in, you know, that consolidation mode. Uh, they haven't broken out, but still really good looking setups out there. So a lot of good looking setups out there. Let's see what this week brings. Um, don't forget if you uh, are in Vegas and you want to meet up with some other stock junkies, 
hosting my first event Thursday, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. All right. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the rest of it, and I'll see you all next week. Good luck trading next week.